Okay, hello and welcome. We're just waiting for a few people to come in. Uh, we've actually got just under 400 people booked, but we know that a number of people are going to watch on a replay because they're booked for a number of talks today. Um, and we're also very aware that because we're hosting it ourselves rather than directly through digital leaders, people have got to add their name um, and email address before coming in. So we will just wait for a, a couple of minutes um, just to see, but um, hello and welcome. What would be lovely is if you could um, type in the chat box whereabouts in the country you're based. That would be really nice. Um, and we're going to do a poll in just a minute or two to ask where you work or, or what your element of, of work is based around. So if you could let us know that you could hear us as well, that would be really helpful. Thank you. So, oh, hi, thanks Twickenham and the head office is Epsom. Um, fantastic, thank you. Oh, Sheffield, thank you, and Cardiff. Wow, wonderful, North Wales, City of London, awesome. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Lancashire, Stockport. Oh, my goodness. Um, Wiltshire, Bristol, um, Glasgow, Manchester. Hi, Hayley. Hi, Abigail. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Anna Lee. Hi, Daniel. Hi, no, C4. So I don't know your first name. Hi, Barry. Hi, David. Um, Paul, Helena, Ram. Um, fantastic. Thank you ever so much. And Mike. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put up a quick poll for you. <laughs> this is so cool. Thank you, Lake District. Brilliant. Thank you so much. This is amazing. I'm just going to start a poll. Now, this is the first time I've ever done a poll on here. So let's see how it works. Um, I'm going to go start poll. And this is your sector of interest. So in the sidebar, there should be a poll. If you click on the one that says poll just underneath chat, and you should be able to put so I wondered whether people were in the public sector, private sector, charity, community, it's a personal interest um, or other. So what would be really great is if you could go into the poll and click which sector of interest that you're joining us from today. So, oh, nobody's clicked a button yet as far as I can see. So maybe none of you have any interest <laughs> in it. That would be disappointing. So and if it if it isn't any of those sectors, just click other. It would be really handy to know how or why you're joining us in the poll. Well, we'll keep that poll open and we'll share it at a later stage during the session. Um, and I'm just going to go back to the chat. And oh, Right, Vicky, you said what poll? And Brian, you said you can't see the poll. Right. I've just, put the, uh, I've just put the poll live. The, live. the poll's just been published. People should now be able to vote on it. Oh, right. Andy is telling me I'd obviously <laughs> missed something because I could see the poll. Can you find it now? It's only just appeared. Thank you so much, Gail. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Ah, oh, fantastic. Brilliant. That is wonderful. Thank you. So I will share it in just a minute. We'll give it 30 more seconds and then I'll share. So just as a quick introduction, I'm Jackie and with me is Andy. And Andy is actually um, a support worker for me because I've got disabilities. And so Andy is supporting me during the session today. And this is the first time that we've done a session together. So thanks so much. And you're joining us for a first. Right, I'm going to end the poll now. And the poll is 40% of you are the public sector. Somebody's from the private sector, 29% the charity, 18 community, 7% three and 7% uh, 7, 7 for personal and 3% for other. I had hoped that I was going to be able to share it for you online. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to share the slides and I'm going to talk you through community mapping what it is um, and I've just realized that because I did a run through <laughs> earlier I had it left at the very last slide <laughs> please forgive me while I just click all the way back through so I can start you at the beginning 
<laughs> that wasn't the most sensible thing. I'm not going to feel too bad about having made an error like this. My heart went out to one of the other speakers for Digital Leaders this morning. The notifications came through and had said it was starting at 8.15 but actually their system hadn't set it up till 9.15. And by the time they went live, it had come down from um, being able to access it. And so my heart absolutely went out to them because that's a nightmare situation to be in. Um, I'm nearly there, I'm just clicking through. It just does it one at a time, very slowly. So two more slides just to click back through and then we're going to start. So let's go start. There you are, I'm sharing my screen now. So I'm Jackie. Community mapping, what is it? Why does it work and how do I get involved? Very simple. Quick bit of housekeeping. This is being recorded. We're going to cover all of those things, what it is, how you can be involved, why it works, to manage your expectations. This project started at a very grassroots level. And it has grown over the last few years. In fact, a couple of years ago, we were named on the Digital Leaders 100 list for potential social impact. If you've got any questions at any stage, please type them in the chat and Andy will make a note of them. And at the end of the presentation, we'll do Q&A. Also, if you've got any that you want to ask offline, please feel free to email me. The email address is at the bottom and it will be on the last slide and we'll also put it into the chat so that you can contact me directly and I'll happily set up calls with any of you if that's what you need. As it's being recorded and some people are watching um, at a later date, I'm going to say hello to all of you as well. Thank you. Um, so the contact's there. So next slide. Who am I? So I'm Jackie King and a quote I love is that we are each so much more than the other see than others see on the surface. I'm 56. I'm a grandmother. I'm a grandmother in tech. Um, for more than 25 years now, I've worked in one shape or form within communities and rural communities, especially, and um, with people of all different ages, from teaching IT to older and bolder, or to play workers who years ago when computers were, or, or laptops were very first introduced, um, from being a childminder, I've done a whole host of things. But for the last 10 years, I've worked on research around connecting people and communities. So let's give you a little bit of history as to my why and my what. Um, in 2003, a block of cheese changed my life. In 2010, I was in what could be called a dream job. I worked for an organization that helped people who had been out of work long term due to illness and disability. And my role was to help them to rediscover their confidence and self-esteem so that they could move back into work. And one day in 2010, one of my managers told me a number of my clients were no hopers and that I could no longer work with them. And I was the person who had to tell them they couldn't come in anymore. Um, it broke my heart. I was in a really privileged, privileged position at that time. I had a little bit of savings and actually my anxiety was huge and um, I left my job, but decided I wanted to find a way to help people. In 2012, along with some of the people who had been my clients back in 2010, um, we put the idea of creating a community map in the global Sir Richard Branson and Virgin Unite challenge to screw business as usual. And the idea was voted third out of all of the ideas with over 28,000 votes by the public. So it was quite a, an achievement, but we knew we were onto something. That led to a whole host of simple conversations with people from all walks of life. What did they need? What were the problems? What were the issues? We listened, we listened some more. We started iterating those ideas. So every conversation led to the next conversation being slightly different. And it became this cycle of research to see what was needed. So we live in a digital world where we can find everything at the touch of a button, or do we? You could go to Google Maps and you could find a hotel or restaurant virtually anywhere in the world and make an informed decision. 
Now try searching for charities, community groups and organisations, the places that are grassroots within our communities that make a difference to so many people's lives every day, whether that's providing help and support or whether that's giving opportunities to volunteer or whether it's somewhere to connect with others and reducing isolation. You soon find when you start trying to find them that there's no single place that was bringing this information together it was actually easier to find those hotels and restaurants. Now imagine how that feels when all you need is to find help either for yourself, a loved one, a colleague. We wanted to do something about it. We had some false starts along the way. We had two maps that nearly got to launching point were within days of launching and they fell by the sideway at the, at, just at the last minute. Then at the end of 2015, I met a young gentleman who said to me, I want to help Jackie and his name was Pete and he started volunteering with me and at the same time I set up If Everyone Cares CIC so it's a community interest company and we started working well in January 2016 we launched the first version of it was then called a dodo which stood for one day one deed one world two years ago we changed the name to a doddle after Noel Edmonds made the suggestion that we change it. And we like the name and I learned how to do trademarks. And so we trademarked it. So it's now a doddle. So the problem is that there are over 150,000 charities. There's an unknown number of community groups, projects, organizations that provide vital help and support. Nothing brings them together. Google Maps, we've said, easy to find a hotel or restaurant, not so easy, and, and Google as well, not so easy to find um, the places you need. Please do ask questions during this, Andy will make a note and I'll come back and answer any of them. A report done by Eden Project Communities showed that disconnected communities were costing the country in the region of 32 billion pounds a year. And another report by the Joseph Roundtree Foundation said that poverty was costing the UK in the region of £78 billion a year. Every single pound of that money is having an impact on somebody's life. That's somebody's life who is being detrimentally affected. It's not really good enough. So what is community mapping and how can it help? Accessibility, equality, diversity and inclusion are rightly so very key things that are in the public domain and being talked about at the moment. But if the information isn't there in the first place, that is a different form of accessibility information. If people cannot see the whole picture, they can't make informed decisions. So decisions are so much easier when you can see the whole picture as you can see here. So a community map will help people to find help and support when they need it, to find places where they can give their time or support in other ways to organisations within the community, for organisations that exist already to find each other, to collaborate, to connect, share resources, um, to perhaps one suggestion from one organization was we can share a local minibus with another organization because they use it on a Monday and a Saturday and we can use it on the other days. Or for organizations, if somebody's thinking of setting up an organization, they can check there isn't a similar one in their area already so they're not duplicating something. They can also find organizations that have done something similar and contact them and, and see where they have found the problems or what works for them so they can replicate it in another area. But also we had so many businesses within communities say to us, we want to support the organizations in our local area, but we don't know how to, we can't find them. This map would help us to find local organizations so we can offer to support them. But it actually helps to find places to connect with others in communities and reduce isolation. It helps people to make choices based on what's right for them. And that might be that they don't need to go to their doctors, that by finding somewhere to volunteer or connect with others, it reduces their isolation, it reduces the struggles on their mental health, 
Um, it might be that they're unemployed and that they find somewhere like Suit and Booted that helps them to um, get some clothes for the interview process, to train them. And oh, there are so incredible organisations out there that people just don't know exist because they can't find them easily. A community map will help bring that information together in one place. From our research, we realised that we started wanting to help people in crisis. But actually, as you can see, a community map helps in so many other ways that data helps everybody in the community, whether they need help, want to help, want to connect with others, whether they're a business, whether they're a charity that needs to help raise their profile, whether they're there are so many different reasons that a doddle would work for them. But we also heard from people who were facing crisis that if this platform was just about helping people in crisis, they probably wouldn't use it because they would feel there was a stigma attached to it. So actually, by making it about the whole community and everybody in the community, it actually takes away that stigma. So somebody who sat on the tube or on a bus can easily look at it on their phone. Nobody looking over their shoulder. They could be looking for somewhere to volunteer. Um, it takes away that stigma. So the time is now, <laughs> COVID-19, oh my goodness. I felt so much guilt at the beginning of COVID-19 because back in 2017, I had been invited to go to Downing Street to talk about the work we were doing and the potential impact. That meeting was sadly canceled because the election was called and they're not allowed to carry on and have meetings when elections are there. And after the election, the person who had set the meeting up left their role and then there was Brexit. And now there's COVID and we haven't had that meeting again. But seeing at the start of COVID and through the recent months, there are hundreds of temporary directories that have set up in towns and cities across the country. But imagine if we'd had a doddle up and running properly, you know, that everybody knew about it. Everybody could have added their information very easily and it could have been used. It would have been one source with many access points. And we believe community mapping is not just about COVID-19. It's for every day, just as the I think is it the RSPCA advert. A puppy is not just for Christmas. It's for life. Well, community mapping is not just for COVID-19. It is for life. It is for communities. It will help organisations to save time and resources. Let's think about um, a, a council office in the housing benefit office. Let's think of a doctor's surgery. Let's think of somewhere where somebody goes and they're asking about what help and support is available in the local area. And they don't know or they take out a paper copy of something. If you can say to people, just go to a doddle, or if you can email them um, a profile, if you can, there are, are many different ways a doddle can be used to actually help to save and point people in the right direction. But also for charities and community organisations, I don't know if you've noticed, but on a doddle, your pinpoint, no matter what size you are, is exactly the same size as another organisation that might be part of a national organisation. It doesn't matter. Your profile is the same size. It levels up every single charity, community group and organisation. Adding profiles to the map. So another thing that we discovered during our research, we did so much research with organisations that had tried and failed at community mapping. We listened to why they had failed. And the main reasons were they were grant funded or they had a a two year project, they were inputting the information themselves. So as soon as they put it up within a couple of months, that information was out of date and they didn't have time to go back and check it. Then they lose their funding. So it was all mothballed. So they were started, but they were resource heavy, cost heavy. A doddle is unique in the fact that it asks organisations to add their profiles themselves. 
it's really simple. It's like filling in a form. And later on in the Q&A, I can show you live um, a doddle. Um, it really is as easy as one, two, three. You don't need any specific tech information about it. Um, knowledge. Each profile can then be semi-branded. So, for example, here, this is Heritage Ability. This is the Suited and Booted Centre. This is Bristol Grandparent Support. It can be made to match the brand. Now, you can choose one main colour. You can add your own he he header image. You cannot change the font. We've got a font that is easy to use, and that's something that we don't do. Smaller organisations are actually starting to use their profile in the place of a website because it shares all the relevant information. And during our research, we discovered that no matter why people were looking, there were five key things they wanted to know. I'll share that in just a moment. So the five key things that people wanted to know. They didn't really want to know when you were founded and who your trustees were. They wanted to know who you help, how you help, the difference you make, the help you need and how to get in contact with you. They wanted to be able to do a bit of more research. They wanted to know um, your social media channels if you've got them as well. But people who were struggling with crisis or um, they were had some accessibility issues wanted to know that the format would be the same because every website has a different format and you find things in different places through different tabs and it gets harder and harder if you're struggling and if you're under stress. So the beauty of a profile on a doddle is that A, it's free for organisations to add. It's very easy to add it. It guides you through putting those five key things on there. And it's also set up in the same structure for each one. And it is like a mini website with little tabs at the top of it to take people to different bits of information. So once somebody has looked once or twice, they can actually know exactly where to find the next element of information. Community mapping is about empowering people, helping them to make the choices that are right for them, to find the help, to find the volunteering opportunities, to reduce isolation. But it's about a personal journey. What is right for one person may not be right for another. And at the moment, there is such a strain and such large waiting lists with doctors and hospital appointments and mental health but actually, for some people, all they might need is to be able to go and do that volunteering. And at the moment, yes, rather than meeting face to face and, and in groups, many of the groups that are on online are, are actually creating online opportunities to do that as well. For example, Recovery Devon, you know, there are some incredible opportunities, but it can take people on the journey that is right for them. And it might be that it's one thing helps them with this and then another organization helps them with that and another organization helps them with the next thing so it's about empowering people to make those choices so we've always listened to feedback every element of what we've created to date has been based on research and feedback and people said to us jackie we love the fact that you are starting to bring this information together in one place but actually we want to see a map for our area. So we've identified just over 400, um, actually it's 420 something key authority areas across the UK. We did some testing in the previous 18 months of how we could create area based maps. At the beginning of COVID-19, when I felt so guilty for the fact that I hadn't got this to a further point, we decided that we would focus on integrating our bespoke development with WordPress multi-sites. At the end of July, we launched the ability to create area-based community maps for any area across the, across the country, literally the whole of the UK, any area. Our goal at the beginning of the year had been that we would have 12 maps, one for each of the regions launched by the end of the year. We now have 43. So we postponed our business model and all of this has been done just because we know it's needed. So we have 43 maps now and we'll give you opportunities to how you can actually help us. The organisations with their profiles still only add their details once 
and we have a unique traffic light system, which I know somebody sent in a question about um, for after in the Q&A already. So I'll tell you about that then when I answer their question. There will be multiple access points to the same data. But if you're on a map down at, in, in Cornwall and you've got a relative up in Scotland and you want to do that, you can still scroll the map so you can go up to Scotland and find out what's there because it is all connected. It is coming from one source of data. We also have the ability to drop a map in any organization's website if they ask us to. We've got some other things that we're working on as well within the development, and I'm happy to answer questions on that. So there's a power in communities. And in a recent government plan, they said, by stretching our ambitions and engaging and learning from people and communities all over the UK, we will create long lasting economic and societal benefits for our country. Well, we're saying community mapping is one of those things because you're empowering people, the power of communities. Communities are a living, breathing thing. So there was another point to this slide. We now have within a doddle, you can search by regions. So we have created the 12 regions across the UK. You can click on one of those. So say, for example, you click on the Southwest, you will then be taken to a page that shows you the maps that we have for the Southwest. Now we have the most in the Southwest for a number of reasons. One, a company in um, a, a firm of solicitors in Bournemouth and Bournemouth U Bo firm of solicitors has sponsored a map for Bournemouth Christchurch and Paul. And we also worked in collaboration with Bournemouth University. A business in Bath has sponsored a map there. And then Recovery Devon asked us if we could create seven maps for Devon and our two test maps were Dawlish and Tynmouth because I'm based in Dawlish. So you can have a look and, and see those. So an area based map, the home page can be made to be whatever it is that is needed for that community. We can give the ability for a, com a community to take control of the home page. The map doesn't have to be the home page. So say we had had these 420 maps in place at the beginning of COVID-19. What would be possible now would be for each of those areas to have their own map and for an organization, a partner organization in that area to take control of the home page and to put all the links to the relevant information for people in that area so they know exactly where to find it, then every organization could put their details on the map. What help they need, what support they need, what support they're giving, how their services have changed during COVID-19 and what they're doing to alleviate that. Can you imagine what the power of that would have been? It's not too late. We have the technology there, we can do it but we need the partner organizations to help us to do that. I'll talk more about that in a minute. So I said we listened to feedback. So another bit of feedback was we had feedback saying, Jackie, we'd like to see a radius. Jackie, we don't necessarily want to see it in just map form. We'd like to see a list form. We'd hope to have it launched before. Um, this event, but but it's it's going to come in the next two weeks. This is just a sneak peek at what it's going to be like. So this first image shows that somebody could do a, a radius of 30 miles for Devon. This next one is five miles round Dawlish. And this one is to show the, the results then in list view. Um, it's coming soon. We are iterating all the time based on feedback. So a reminder of some of the figures. Disconnected communities are said to be costing £32 billion a year and poverty is said to be costing the UK another £78 billion a year. I'm going to give you an example of some potential savings. Now, I'm going to base this on unemployment because I worked in that field when I started working in this. So we did our research and worked out what the average cost would be for somebody unemployed, and that's to local, regional and main government. And so the total cost per person, the average for a single person over the age of 25 is £15,401 for a year annually. 
So imagine we had 400 of the maps up in areas and imagine if one person for each of those areas was found the help and support they needed to be able to move back into work. That creates an annual saving of six point one million pounds, just over six point one million pounds. Now, it wouldn't be out of order within three years time to say that 10 people per area. Could find help and support that got them back into work at an at a earlier rate. You're suddenly talking about savings of £61 million, and that's just unemployment. What about the savings to the National Health Service? What about the, the life qual quality of life for people because they're back into work or they've got help and support at a, at a sooner level, at an area? I'm waffling. I'll stop. I'm so passionate about this. Social impact and value. We're still building how we can track the social impact and value of what a doddle does. I can tell you that in August, we had um, an average page views of just over 1300 page views a day. Um, and this is all organic growth. This is all being done in house. Um, but also at the same time, there's the, the the bigger picture for for local government, for local authorities, for national government. Community mapping helps to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. So there's other benefits in there. So there are many ways to support a doddle. I'm going to run through these quickly because I want to get to Q&A. If you're an organisation, please add a profile. Help spread the word partner with us for a map. I'm going to come into that in more detail in just a minute. We've just partnered with Cardyard, the UK's top gift card exchange. If you've got an unused gift card, you can donate it to us through Cardyard. Um, and that helps to support um, every charity that creates a profile on the map. You can sponsor an area based map. You could become a key sponsor. So other ways. So Funders, if you are a grant, grant funding body or you know of one, you could make it part of your application process that organisations applying for funding need to create a profile on a doddle. It costs you nothing to add that sentence in there, but it would benefit everybody within the community by doing that. You can spread the word. You could become a key sponsor if you're a bigger organisation. Again, I'll come on to that in just a second. Right, there's power in partnerships and collaboration. So two of our partners at the moment are Recovery Devon and Action to Prevent Suicide. With Recovery Devon, they asked us if we could create the seven maps for Devon. So it was great for us to test those. We've done those. They have connections and links with organisations out in the community. So for us, they then tell the organisations and encourage the organisations to create a profile on the map. They help raise the profile of the map to people who will need it. So that's how a partner can help us. At this point in time, there is no cost to a partner organisation. You just have to commit to the fact that you already have good existing networks and that you will help to fill the map in your area. And we will create a map in your area, your region. Our other partner is Action to Prevent Suicide. We're working on a project with them called the Map of Hope. They are going to map the number of people that they train and the areas in which, not giving away addresses or anything like that, that they have trained people in assist and and um, talk. I can't remember the other name. So that people who are feeling suicidal can actually see that there are all these people out there who care enough to do the training. And hopefully it just might stop somebody from taking their own life. Sponsorship. Sponsorship from a business to help for an area based map. It helps to put your business at the heart of the communities. And again, I can show you a map in just a while. And this was a quote from um, uh, Kate, the head of CSR for Dutton Gregory Solicitors um, in Bournemouth. And they sponsored the Bournemouth Christchurch and Pool map. And one of the things that Kate said to us is actually for their business, they get approached by lots of organisations and they have to say no quite a lot as well. And actually, 
they can now go, we're really sorry, we can't, but we sponsor this map and we're encouraging you to put your information on there, create a profile. So it's a softer no, it makes it easier for them. And it raises their profile in the community. They're, they're an amazing company. Sponsorship to us is much more than the donation that you make. We put the link to you and your company on, on your chosen community map. It helps to inspire customer and staff loyalty. It helps provide positive PR to reach new customers. We've got a sister platform called the Community Pledge, which is still in beta, but you get to put a free profile on there as well. It helps to build strong and supportive communities and it helps to connect your business with the community. Sponsorship helps to um, it helps to fund free profiles for local charities, community groups and organisations on the map. It helps to fund the day to day running costs of your area based community map. It helps to fund continued development and um, including improved accessibility. One of our biggest things that we're working on in the next 12 months is the accessibility because we want every single profile to be accessible to people with different forms of disabilities, which would mean that by creating your profile on a doddle, you instantly are something called WCAG2 compliant. So it's it's the, the, the regulations for, for accessibility compliance. Um, and we will use an element of that sponsorship to, um, to for um, social media and for raising awareness of that area based map and of the organizations on it. So a key sponsor um, opportunity. Sorry, somebody just knocked on my window. I cannot believe that somebody knocked on my window. Wow, I do apologize. So key sponsor opportunity. Let's give you an example. So I did some research on key supermarkets, so the top five, and a number of them have community champions, ambassadors and pioneers. And a number of those have that token box, monthly token box. So they have three charities each month. So let's imagine there were 300 stores. So hang on a second. No, no, I'm on my call. Oh, wow. It's some, I'm so sorry. That is just... Oh, that's enough to make me panic. Sorry, I have um complex PTSD. And when something like that happens, it can really throw me, which is part of the reason that Andy's there. So I apologise, I'm going to compare. Brief, Jackie, take a minute, you're back in. Oh, thank you, Andy. <laughs> oh, wow. That was one of my amazing support workers, because um, I don't go out a lot, <laughs> um, bringing me eggs. Isn't that incredible? Right, let's go back onto this. Um, so let's take it that they have um, 300 stores. So that's 10,800 charities a year, of which two thirds of them won't be successful. That's 7,200 that aren't gonna be the ones that get that money that month. Imagine if part of the application to be one of those three featured charities is um, that they create their profile on a doddle so that it helps raise their profile even more within the community. It softens the no if they're not the successful one at the same time. But also that um, business helps to reach all of their customers. So I had a conversation with somebody recently who said, um, it's great, I went into my local store, I saw that they're supporting the local food banks, which is incredible, Jackie. But actually it's not doing anything that's supporting me. Yes, I've got that feel good, feeling for that business but they're not actually supporting me whereas if they supported an organization like yours that's every organization in that local area then if i was looking for somewhere to volunteer it was helping me if i needed help for something if i wanted to find a local group because i wanted to take on a new interest it helps me so there are some real benefits there our goal as a community interest company is that at the point of um making profit um, we're going to reinvest that profit back into communities directly through existing community trusts and foundations. Those tr those um, funds will be allocated to community focused projects where they'll have the greatest impact. Because another thing about the map is that it will help to show where there are still areas of need within communities. So that's a benefit. So over the last couple of years, we've won a number of awards. We were named on the UK's Digital Leaders 100 list for potential social impact. We were given a points of light award by the Prime Minister 
voted third by um, the Richard Branson and named on the UK um, Enterprise Awards and the B the Change Awards as well. So before we go, we're going to but before we go into the Q and A, we're going to ask a few questions. Uh, we're going to give you another poll just to say how much do you think it's cost us to date to get to where we are? And I'll provide my contact details after that. So I'm going to stop, stop the slide presentation, go to the poll and go to Q&A. Andy, can you help make sure that I get the right poll, please? And um, yeah, that's no worries. I'll see what we need to reset the current poll. No, oh, there it is. OK, so I was going to start the new poll. Uh, so it's just about to go publish live now if people want to vote on that. Right. Has it actually gone live? Could people tell us in the chat if it's gone live? Ah, there you are. People are voting, oh, so it's looking good. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. Cool. Brilliant. We'll give it 30 more seconds and then we're going to get ready for the Q&A. So, oh, it's, it's, it's a reasonable split at the moment. We have got 42% um, at 25,000. 30% or 28% at 50 um, and um, 30, oh, 34% at 100,000. There you are. Okie doke. Right, I'm going to call it quits now. So 37% of you, I'm going to end the poll. 37% of you um, said that it was um, 25,000. 31% said that it was 50,000 and another 31% said that it was um, 100,000 and and then the others didn't come up in a percent but it looks as though a couple of people have voted for the other ones. To date it's cost us £25,000. That's it. We are volunteers in effect. I don't get paid um, and um, we've had sponsorship, we've had um, a bit of grant funding and we did a small crowdfunder and that's how we've paid for everything that we've done to date. Um, and I'm actually really proud of it. So, um, yeah, so 37% of you were right. But actually, I'm really pleased to see that that another 62% of you thought it was 50,000 or more, because actually that shows that hopefully we're doing something that's, that's good. So thank you. So we're going to go to the chat now. So Andy's joining me. Oh, Andy, you're silent. It's that magic thing, the joys of working at home when you talk to yourself for a while. Right. So we've had some lovely questions and some lovely comments. Thank you all. Uh, so I'll start from the top. We've got a few to get through. Um, I'd like the sorry, I'd like the council I work for to use and signpost our local organisations to this rather than use local systems. How do you suggest I go about this? Um, Andy, is there, I don't suppose there's any chance there's a name there. I'd, don't worry if there's not. I'm going to say to whoever's asked that one, um, I would be more than happy to have a conversation with you. Um, I think it's about letting them know that it's there. Um, and I would you could set up an, uh, a conversation. Well, I mean, I know none of them are in, per <laughs> none of them are in per person at the moment, but we could set up a Zoom or um, a, a call like this and I would actually answer any questions on it. I have no fear of questions. If there's something I don't know, then actually it's pointing out there's something I need to learn about. Good news. So, it's, it's, it's from Emma and myself and Emma have already exchanged details. So we have Emma's email address so we oh, can fantastic. pick that conversation so, up afterwards. Emma, I think this is something that every single council and local authority should have. I think it's about time that it was brought together in one place. If you think about it, you have companies house for every business. You have charities commission for every charity. But either, e even those don't bring you together all the information. But if you bring this information together in one place and you create a national resource for use at a local level, you are creating something that gives an intrinsic value for every single member of every community across the country. There is no discrimination. You know, it is it's not just for housing. It's not just for unemployment. It's not just for mental health. We have people who said to us that where they found help and support was actually by volunteering for the local cats protection um, because it gave them that space. By doing it in other ways and we have seen 
there are a couple of really good examples of directories out there. There are a couple of really good directories out there, but they are just for that area. Why not bring it together? And I will have conversations with anybody about this. And yeah, so Emma, be in contact. <laughs> Next one, Andy. Lovely, brilliant. Um, it says, if our support is national, does it mean it links to our London head office? Uh, how can we show we offer local and regional support also? Oh, fabulous question. I said to you that we, we really listened when and everything's been built based on feedback. We have um, the, the beta element of something called duplicates in. So if you are based in London, but you actually have either branches or you provide support in other areas, you can actually um, upload a CSV file with the first part of a postcode on it or the whole postcode if it is a specific branch. You create the master profile and then the, all the other profiles for that, that Excel sheet are created for you. And the difference is, is the name. So it will take on the town there or whatever else. If one of those goes, you can easily delete it because you have full control in the in your dashboard. If you have another one that go another one that gets started up in another area, you can just add it. You can also within that you can choose which elements of the profiles you want duplicated in in all the separate ones. And if there's something different in one of your areas or regions, you can put that specifically in that one. Does mean you need to go in and update that bit, but we've tried to make it as user friendly and as flexible as possible so that people can cover wider areas and have branches, but not have to update 150 different profiles. I hope that answers your question. Right, next question. We've got a lot of questions coming in, so we'll try and get through these. Uh, will there be or are there subcategories uh, for example, if you want to volunteer or just see opportunities uh, that are in your area. So, yeah, so you can you can do a search just around your area. And, do you know, I don't think we have put a filter yet for just volunteering, but there are filters. And when the new search is, is, is updated in within the next couple of weeks, it'll be even better. There are filters. So you could say if you were looking for organisations around dementia, um, and because that's where you want it, you wanted to maybe support um, volunteer at a memory cafe or something like that. You can put in criteria. We are also going to add the ability to search under um, tags and just words as well so that you can come up with that. So, yeah, I hope that answers it enough. But if you have ideas as to how we can improve it, please tell us we are developing everything based on feedback and research. If we hear the same thing from enough people, we will implement it. Brilliant. Um, what is the traffic light system and why do you have it? Oh, so another bit of information that go, um, findings from our research was many directories, people would say that they would go to a directory and find the information was out of date. And that would be really frustrating. They would think they'd found some help and support, but then it was gone. And so um, what we um, what um, what we did is we implemented a traffic light system. If a pinpoint on the map is green, it means it's been updated in the last um, six months. If it's amber, it's been updated in the last six to 12 months. And if it's red, it's over 12 months. So straight away, people can see whether the information is going is, is more most likely to be um correct and relevant and up to date. So I hope that that helps. And we're going to be improving that even more. Lovely. Thank you. Um, another question. Do you only partner with organisations or other directories maps? Uh, for example, in Wales, uh, there are two directories that link to each other. Uh, an example of Duis and Info Engine. We are really open. We haven't worked out we, we because we haven't partnered with another directory or map yet. Um, we haven't put in the, that infrastructure, but we would actually really like to be able to. So we would be happy to investigate how we could partner with existing organisations that are doing something and whether there's some form of API or connection that we can do to do that so that actually they can work um, together, but complementing each other. So whoever that was from, please get in contact with me. Let's have some conversations and see how we can work it out. One thing I'm going to add to this is 
one of the things I found frustrating at times when we've done our research is that we'd have conversations with people, but because what we were capable of doing at that point in time didn't quite match what they wanted, they didn't come back to us and let us know that it didn't quite match in that way. So I'm saying if there's something that doesn't quite match, come and tell us, be really honest. We are not precious. We are not connected to our egos. This is about helping people and communities. OK, so if there's a way that we're not doing something quite this way, but you need us to, let's investigate it. Um, we have just had some conversations recently and we're investigating how we can have partners for maps that can have a version of the map that is actually hidden within their internal system so they can verify organizations so that they can actually then support the local um, uh, CCGs and social services and things like that with organizations that they have verified that are safe for their um, social uh, social workers and people to be able to forward people to. And we are working on a way to do that. So, um, yeah, ask us. We'll investigate anything. OK, a few more quick questions. Um, is there a cost related to registering? No, no, it is absolutely free for every charity, community group and organisation to add their profiles. It really, really is. This is about helping you raise your profile so that people can find you. You know, if you want to make a donation to us because you've got some money in the bank, then fabulous. We won't say no because, you know, we run on a really small budget. But but no, there mustn't be a barrier financially to stopping organisations of every size. And actually, that reminds me. Oh, gosh, sorry. Right. Some organisations are run by people from their own homes. Or maybe there's um, the domestic violence organisations, women's aid and, and people, organisations like that, that do not want to show their address. We have the ability for you when you put in your location, you put hide it. So it shows a pinpoint in an area which you can move if it's too close to where you are. It shows a pinpoint in your area, but does not give your address. So it doesn't have to show your address. So it is safe for you to put your organisation on there. Next question. Thanks, Andy. That's good. Um, it kind of links quite nicely in terms of um, do you include activities, for example, coffee, meets, knit and natter groups? Of course. Absolutely. Totally. Those are the places that help people reduce isolation, that, that reduces stress on mental, mental health and everything else. This is about not being so prescriptive that you don't meet that category. If you are purely a a business and you are charging for everything then we would really appreciate it if you had a profile as well on the community pledge and actually helped to fund us but this is who are we to say what particular help and support it is that somebody needs um everybody needs something different Brilliant. I've uh, got just a few more to go through. Um, I'd like to encourage my employees to volunteer for a few days each year. Can our doll help with this? Oh, wow. Of course. Um, yes, definitely. One of the things that um, and, and it helps by just being there. So what would be amazing is if your business wanted to support a local map would be absolutely fabulous. But actually, you can encourage your employees to go onto the map and find local organisations to support. Um, and one of the beautiful things about that is you can actually then again, if it's dementia, if it's helping people who in the local food bank, if it's something for you know, the, the organisations are so wide and varied. You know, it might be that you encourage um, having um, within your business, you might instead of having a food bank, you have almost like a baby bank where you encourage your customers to donate to the local baby bank. Um, there are just so many different ways that you can use a doddle to help support your community, the organisations in your community and your customers, because you don't know what your customers are facing. And uh, one of them is, uh, when, when can people start registering? Now, just go on. It's all there. We've got our first 1300 organisations on there. Just go on there. And, and it is developing and evolving all the time. If you find any hiccups, let us know because it is in development. Um, you know, please just let us know if ever you come across a problem because we'll sort it. Um, 
but yeah go on now it's there it's easy it's free and there's a there's a couple of similar questions um obviously one talks about the challenge of getting people to visit a new directory um how are you going to attract more people uh, very similar to a question that asked about how can we get started get starting to get the general public using this directory um so we we have a reasonable um social media following so we 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 are, get out there and we start to do that but actually for each area that we're starting a map we plan on sending out a press release for that area and the partner organization hopefully will help us with who to get in contact with in that area um so one of our long-term goals is we actually think that one of our, our our second biggest cost to running a doddle will actually be the social media the pr and media and actually getting it out there we already do a featured um, profile of the week so we choose an organization that has a green profile once a week and we feature them and they become our featured organization for the week if there's something going on in the news um that we know there's an organization on the map, we will try to then highlight that organization and link them back to it. But we need other people to help us to do that because we are a tiny team and we we can't do everything. So we need help with doing that. Hence why actually the area-based maps and having partnerships with organizations in those areas will be beneficial to everybody. We can give those organizations the technology and the ability to have the map. And some organizations might want to have a map dropped into their website as well as their area map. The more places that there are for people to access the, the way into finding the information, the better. I hope that answers it. Cool. I think that's covered all questions and I'm obviously a bit conscious of time. Um, I had yeah. just dropped Jackie's email into the chat and obviously I know it's on the slide. So anything that we might have missed or any other questions you have, please just obviously email them over to Jackie uh, or we can pick yeah. them up after the session. That, I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I'm truly, truly grateful for your time. And I know that we've run over time, so I appreciate and value every single one of you in your time. Any questions, please just ask. I will happily set up any calls with anybody, answer any questions um and let's get this out there and let's within the next six months let's get all of those maps up and running and it becomes something that people and organizations and areas are crazy not to be on so thank you so much for your time i will do a blog which will link to the um research that i said about the 78 million and the 32 uh, sorry 78 billion and the 32 billion i will put my links in there for where i got that so you can see they are actual reports that were done and thank you so much. Bye.